What do you know about multiplying polynomials? Easy. They're easy? Okay, why are they easy? Because it's just 3 times 4. It's just 3 times 4? You can multiply 3 and 4x? Yes. I thought we couldn't do that for like unlike terms. No, we can because this is multiplied. Oh, what can we not do? Plus it. We can't plus it or add, add, add right? Subtract it. Or subtract. We can't do that, but we can multiply, can't we? Yes. Okay? So we just say 3 times 4x, and what do we get? 12x. 12x. Y'all are welcome, by the way. Okay? Now, I will tell you that um, not on a problem <coughs> as simple as this, but I'm just giving you a warning, okay? There have been people struggling today <clears throat> when they're putting the answers into IXL because what would the answer be if it was this? 12J. 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 And if you put 12X in, it's going to count it wrong. Yeah. So yeah. make sure you're using the variable in the problem. I know that seems obvious, but people have been... Uh, all of my examples are X. Maybe I need to change some of my examples to be something else. That's why I wouldn't give you this one. But just use the variable that's in the problem that they give you. Okay? All right, what about this problem? What do we do with this? Same thing. Same thing? Yeah, so it would be like... So it would just be like about, right? It's... it's, it's 10x squared minus 5. So 5 times 2x squared is what? 10, and 10x squared, squared and then? Negative 5. 5 times negative 1. And what's this called? Distributing. It is definitely called distributing. Okay, it's the distributive property. Distributing is multiplying, isn't it? So do you see why we're talking about it today? Yes. Distributing. Okay. So what about a problem like this? So we're still distributing, right? First we distribute the 3x. That's what I heard him say. So I do one at a time. I'm going to distribute the 3x to everything in the second parentheses. 3x times 2x is? 6x squared. Because when I'm multiplying like bases, what do I do with the exponents? I add them, right? I add them. And what's the exponent on this x? 1. And what's the exponent on this x? And what's 1 plus 1? Two. 2. Does everybody make, understand that? Yes. Okay. And then I do 3x times 5 and I get 15x. <coughs> now what do I have left to do? I have to distribute the negative 1 to each term of the second parentheses. What's negative 1 times 2x? Negative 2x. Negative 2x. And then negative 1 times 5? So what's left to do? Combine. Now I have to combine like terms, right? <clears throat> so I get 6x squared. Okay, so um, I was a little worried earlier because we did this and, I, and they said it's 13. Oh, did we not practice that last time? Right? Adding and subtracting? Do we mess with the x's? No. No, we still get 13x, right? Don't forget the x. And then minus 5. Okay, so far? Yes. So what about a problem like this? Here's where I really need to caution you. Like really, really, really. Okay? If all you write down is 9x squared plus 16, you will get this problem wrong every single time. Because it's not asking you to square each term. It's asking you to square this parentheses. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to square something? It, it times itself. itself. I'm not saying you have to write it down like I'm writing it down right here, but it sure is easier to see everything you're supposed to do if you write it down, right? Yeah. I know some of you can do this in your head, and if you can, that's fine. I've never said anything about that, right? But if you have it written down, you can see the distributive property and see the distributive property. What is 3x times 3x? 9x squared. 9x squared. And what is 3x times negative 4? Negative 12x. And if you don't Wait. distribute, you're going to miss that every time, aren't you? What is negative 4 times 3x? Negative 12x. And if you don't distribute, you're going to miss that term every time as well, aren't you? And then negative 4 times negative 4? 16. And now, combine my terms. 9x squared minus 24x plus 16. 
think about it. If all you do is square this term and square this term, you miss that middle term every single time. Okay, please remember to square something means multiply it by itself. Please do that. Okay? <clears throat> Here's the other thing about these two problems that we just did. Okay? The other thing is sometimes when we get here and I say, how do we do this? Someone says foil. Okay? I have zero problem with foil. When you were in Algebra 1 learning how to do it. Right? If you don't know what it is, I'm totally fine with that. Okay. Especially if you know what distributive property is. Because FOIL is just kind of like a, what is it called, a mnemonic? For you to help you remember what to do in what order. It means first, outside, inside, last. So you want to multiply the first two, you want to multiply the outside two, you want to multiply the inside two, and you want to multiply the last two. That's fine when you have two binomials, right? Yeah. But what if the problem you're doing is not a binomial? Can you FOIL it anymore? No, you can't. No. What can you do? Just distribute. distribute. And that's what we're doing anyway, so that's why I wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure you know the correct vocabulary for what we're, to, what, what we're talking about. Again, I don't have any problem with you saying FOIL, but in Algebra 2, we're supposed to make sure we're using the correct math vocabulary, and the correct math vocabulary for this is distributive property. Does that make sense? Okay. So what do we do first? Distribute the x, okay? Here, here, and here. So what is x times x squared? Uh, x squared. Cube. Okay, so what's x times x? x squared, right? What's x times x squared? Remember, when we're multiplying like bases, what are we doing with the exponents? We add them. How do you get 2x? You, you're adding. You, you get 2x if you add x and x. When we're multiplying, it's the exponents that we're changing. Does that make sense? Okay. Then what's x times 3x? 3x squared. 3x squared. And then what's x times 4? 4x. It's 4x. So, okay. So, uh, Oh. <laughs> Everybody okay so far? What do I do now? I distribute negative 6. Distribute it to each term in the second parentheses, right? So what's negative 6 times x squared? What's negative 6 times 3x? And then what's negative 6 times 4? Did you see what I did? Yeah. I did it different than the previous two times, right? Mm -hmm. Previous two times I just wrote all the answers out in a row, in a line. Oh, yeah. What did I do this time? Oh. I lined up the like terms, right? I lined up the x squared, I lined up the x's. Is this required? No, no absolutely not, but some people think it's easier. Okay, so I wanted to show you to make sure you know all your options. Okay? x cubed minus 6x squared why? uh huh right do you see how easy it is to mess up if you're not paying attention right did I try to trick you? yes Yes. Did I succeed? No. no. I did not. Because we got it right. You got it right. You argued with me politely, politely, Both right? Are. But if, remember, you have to pay attention. When we're combining our, our like terms, we've got to combine the 3 and the negative 6. So very good job on that. Okay? Sorry, I forgot to tell you I was going to try to trick you that That's time. Okay. okay. But you didn't get tricked anyway, so good. So what comes next? Uh, negative 14x. Negative 14x. Minus 24. Any questions about this? Okay, so just one quick check. One quick check. 2x to the 5th times negative 6x to the 4th. What's that going to be? It's a number. 
What do I do with the 2 and the negative 6 first? I multiply. So what do I get? Negative 12, x to the? Ninth, because when we're multiplying like bases, what do we do with the exponents? Add them. Any questions about that? We're good?